You can find small format ICs abundantly throughout our security market with varying degrees of quality standards. But now it's time to be amazed by the exceptional redesign of the new generation Kaba Peaks preferred SFICs. Come with me into this new dimension of Peaks SFICs. You'll be so glad that you did. Hi, I'm William Link, and today we're going to take a look at the new generation Kaba Peaks Preferred SFIC. We're going to first take a look at the visuals of these two different cores. Then we're going to look at the improvements that have been made. The components that make them different, we're going to do the math, which is very simple. Then we're going to combinate and test these cores. These cores have been re-engineered for quality and assembly. There has been a plug change, and it's been redesigned for assembly improvements. We have two basic styles of cores, the 8800, which is known as best style and uses individually capped chambers. We also have the 8900, which is Falcon style, using a slide cover, now made in solid brass. Both of these cores have a pin stack in A2 of 23. Both bottom pins are used from the A section of the pin kit, and the wafers come from the B section of the pin kit. The spring retainer on the 8900 is used, but there is no spring retainer on 8800. Those are individually capped. Both, again, are used in the SFIC pinning system. You might ask about control chambers. Yes, there are control chambers over all six chambers. The patented Pin stack is already sealed by the factory, so in this interchangeable core, you do not need to worry about it. We're going to take a look at the component table, which will show us the components that we're going to use for these two cores. The components for our interchangeable cores, small format, would be the 8800 on this line and the 8900 on this line. As you can see, all the components are the same, with the exception of the chamber caps and the slide covers. Now, before we do the math for our cylinders, we have to do it first on paper. We already know that the pin stacks for the interchangeable cores small format are going to be 23, and that's a uniform pin stack. We are an SFIC using an A2 system. So, we have to remember that our keys are read and gauged from tip to bow, and that corresponds to the interchangeable cores. We start from the back of the core to the front of the core. The back is chamber one up to the front of the core, which will be chamber six. I've already done the math for you, so I'm going to take you over to the chart and show you how easy it is to do that math. What we have here is our coded pinning chart for Peaks SFIC. Now notice that our pin stacks will total 23 a uniform pin stack. The first thing we do with our math is put in our biddings. I put in our change key bidding here in blue, our top master key is here in green, and our control key bidding is at the top in red. The next step is for us to figure out how to determine our bottom pins and master pins, which is really quite simple. If you see this dark line right here and here, those are the two biddings that we will use to consider that. We do not consider the control key for bottom pins and master pins. The first thing to do is look at both of the numbers for the change key and top master. Whichever of the two is a smaller number, that automatically becomes our bottom pin. The difference to the larger number becomes our master pin. In the second chamber, we see we have a 9 and a 5. The smaller number is a 5. That automatically becomes our bottom pin. The difference up to 9 is 4. That is our master pin. That is how we consider how to figure out bottom pins and master pins. Now, the next step I think that is easiest is to determine our top pins because this system is our own system. And there's a very simple formula that you can use to figure out the top pins. The number 13 in A2 is used, minus the control cut, will give us the top pin. Well, we know the control cut, so 13 minus 7 gives us the top pin of 6. Simple subtraction. 13 minus 7 is 6, 13 minus 9 is 4, 13 minus 6 is 7, and so on. 
which would only leave us our control pins, also known as our buildup pins. There is a formula for that for those of you who like formulas, but those who don't, there's another simpler way to do that. We just need to make sure that our pin stack equals 23. And how do we do that? We already know in the first chamber we have a 3, we have a 2, and a 6. That totals 11. Subtract from 23 gives us 12. Bingo. There is our buildup pin. Same in the second chamber. We know we have a 5 and a 4 and a top pin of a 6. That totals 15. Subtract that from our pin stack total of 23. Leaves us 8. That is our buildup pin. We do that for the rest and we have the pinning chart completed and all of the pins here are like an x-ray view of the interchangeable core. So our next step now is to set up ourselves so we can get ready for the actual pinning of our interchangeable core. Here we have the Kaba Peaks preferred pin kit for A2 system. Let's take a look at how it's put together. Very simply, the bottom pins are all at the bottom of the kit. We have the J pins in this section here, and we have the A bottom pins for some of our cylinders in this section. All of our wafer pins are here, which are the B pins, and they will run from a 2B up to a 19B. We have our retainers at the side, and we have retainers over here, springs, caps. So everything we need is in the kit itself. What's probably best to do is from the math that we have done is take out the pins that we will need, put them on a pinning mat or a pinning block, and begin uh, to prepare for combinating. All the components are laid out on this pin block. We have chambers one through six in this direction. Now we have our bottom pin, our master pin, control pin, and top pin here. Our springs are at the top. If you notice, there's nothing in the special patented peaks chambers here because those are already loaded in the core by the factory. All we have to do now is take these pins and springs and load them into the cores. First, we're going to take a quick look at the two styles of peaks SFICs. The first is the 8900 Falcon style peaks SFIC. It requires a slide cover. We're not going to use that for this demonstration. We're going to use the 8800, requiring individual caps for each chamber. Now that our components are laid out on our block, we're going to begin combinating the Peaks SFIC. We're going to start from the back of the core, chamber 1 through chamber 6. And we're going to combinate each chamber fully before we move on to the next. The first is to get the number 1 bottom pin. Then the master pin. Now, before I go any farther, I'm going to make sure that this cylinder, all the components are stabilized by this tool. And it makes sure that the sleeve and the shell and the plug are all aligned so the pins fall down smoothly. Now we're going to go on to the control pin. And finally, the top pin. I'm going to push down, make sure they've fallen completely to the bottom. Now we're going to move on to chamber two. The bottom pin first. Master pin. I'm going to push down with my ejector tool. Control pin, and our top pin. We continue on until the rest of the core is filled. What we need to look at is to make sure that we have even pin stacks. Now if you look down visually, you can see that all the pins are aligned to 23 and that's visual confirmation that we've combinated the core correctly. Our next step is to put the springs in and do a temporary test to make sure that our keys do work.
Now we'll simply push down with her finger and we'll test our master key. Excellent operation. Now our control key will only turn 15 degrees clockwise. And it does. Now we know we've combinated the cylinder appropriately, so our next step is to remove the springs and we're going to put it into our capping fixture, put the springs back in and cap each individual chamber. Cords in the capping fixture. We reinsert the springs, chamber one in the back, through chamber six. Visual confirmation, the springs are all in and equal levels. Now we are simply going to put our caps in and cap each individual chamber. You can slide the caps over. You can do each cap in individually or you can put all the caps over. I'm going to put all the caps over just to protect so that the springs don't pop out. And again, work from the back of the core to the front. I'm now going on to chamber four. I have five next. chamber six. I'll take the staking tool and just gently press down on each chamber to make sure they're seated. Perfect. Now we take our locksmith hammer and we're going to seal each chamber. I'm going to double check with one more tap in each chamber to make sure they're set in. Let's take a look at our capping. Great. Looks like all chambers were capped appropriately. Let's do a final test with our keys. Our change key. Very smooth operation. Our master key, also very smooth. And finally, our control key. Our control key will only turn 15 degrees to the right, which it does. Beautiful. As a final test, we've installed our Peaks Prefers cores into a key retainer device. To the left, we have the top master key locked into place. Our change key is inserted. Notice the top master rotates. It can go out, do its business. Change key locked into place. When the master key is finally returned, turn back to the three o'clock position. The change key is released and the top master is again locked into place. Thus, we have successfully operated our Peaks Preferred Core.